Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats, and this is the first annual Best Picture Readathon announcement. Um, if you have been watching this channel in the past, you'll know that Rebecca from Rebecca Lovato and I have collaborated in three previous years on a Best Picture tag inspired by the nominees for that year's Best Picture Award at the Oscars, the Academy Awards. Um, this year we decided it would be more fun and more likely to get other people involved if we actually do a readathon instead of a tag. So we have prepared prompts based on each of the nine nominees. And what is going to happen is the week before the Oscars, so I believe that's February 2nd through 7th or 8th, I'll put dates and details down below. For that week, you can choose which movies or which prompts from the list you want to read books for and each book completed gets to count as a vote for that movie and then we'll like tally up all the ballots and see which movie wins based on which books you guys are reading. So without further ado I'm gonna go through the list of movies and then the prompts that we've decided on for those and quite honestly if you just want to know the prompts you can just skip and look in the doobly doo or you can go to Rebecca's video which will link because I'm sure she will do an amazing job explaining all of them. I actually want to make this more like conversational and more interesting in my mind is to talk a little bit about how we chose the prompts. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you the prompt, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about how we came upon that. So um, the interesting thing about this, so the Oscar nominees were just announced yesterday, Monday, January 13th. In order to like have the most time and, and kind of work through this, instead of waiting until the nominations were totally up and then like starting from scratch then, um, Rebecca and I have been batting back ideas for the last three weeks based on like a whole list of movies we thought could potentially be nominated. And so it was great because when the nominees came out on Monday, it turned out that every movie on that list except for one was already on our list and we'd already talked about it. We'd already come up with a couple good ideas. So then we just went through and narrowed down to what we thought was the most interesting for a prompt for a readathon because a readathon prompt is a lot less specific than a tag, like the tags we've done in the past. We want you to be able to expand these and choose a bunch of different books to fit the categories. Um, so we wanted to choose the, the prompts that were both interesting and like expansive enough to be useful and to to fit a wide variety of books. Now I'm not gonna talk about the books right now that I'm gonna be reading for this list but I will have a TBR video probably in about a week. I've got a lot going on with work right now hence where I'm filming this um, but this weekend I can decide on the books that I'm gonna read and make a TBR video and post that as well. I just wanted to make sure that I get this up so you guys know what the prompts are and you can start thinking of your TBRs because I would love to see them. All right, without further ado, the very first movie on the list is the only one that we had not actually um, put on our list and it just slipped our minds. I even saw a trailer for this when I was watching one of the other movies on the list and I was like, oh yeah, I want to see that movie, but I didn't and I'm just going to wait till it's at the cheap theater and... Uh, that movie is Ford versus Ferrari. So if you know about this movie, it is basically uh, about this real time period in history where the Ford Motor Company decided that it wanted to not just be like a car for the masses, but it also wanted to have like respect in the racing European scene. And so they decided they were going to win this one 24 hour race that happens in France. The whole movie is kind of centered around this competition and like doing what it takes to win this competition. And so we want you to pick a book that uh, it features a competition or maybe like a race of some kind in it. So this can be, it doesn't have to just be like racing cars or sports. It can also be, um, you know, like Dumplin' where there's a huge plot line around this, comp this beauty pageant. Or it could be the NASCAR Harlequins that I used to read uh, like seven years ago. Like it can as long as it features some kind of race or competition as a big part of this book, then you can totally choose it to support this movie and vote for this on your ballot. If the second movie on the list is The Irishman, which is this huge, like very buzzy Martin Scorsese film that is kind of the culmination of many of his other films. And so we batted back and forth a lot of different options for this. We were talking about like, should it be something around Martin Scorsese being the director? Should it be something around the fact that this has this de-aging technology and that covers a lot of time? Should it be around whatever? But eventually what we decided on is actually has to do just with the runtime of this film. It's a Martin Scorsese 
film and his films always feel a little long and then this one is three and a half hours long it's on Netflix you can guys can go watch it now if you have a Netflix account but it is three and a half hours long anyway the point being we thought the length of this movie was one of the most significant talked about parts of it and it makes for a great thing that if you want to be the person who supports the Irishman and if you want to read a book for the Irishman what you should do is pick a book that's more than 400 pages long especially during a readathon that is such a chunker so like if you want to dedicate your week to reading a 400 page book you go person and that is your book for the Irishman. The next movie on the list is Jojo Rabbit and this is actually one of the movies on this list that I have seen when we were working on it. Um, I came up with a couple ideas before I saw it and then I went and saw it and I came out and I was like I feel like the only thing that makes sense having seen this movie which is a satire is to say that you should pick a satire but that is not actually the prompt because as Rebecca and I were batting that back and forth we had this long discussion about like what constitutes a satire? How do you tell a book is a satire? Are, like, are these lists of satires? Is everyone just going to read a modest proposal? How do you know if it works or doesn't? Like even the movie Jojo Rabbit, which is clearly supposed to be a satire, didn't totally work for me as a satire, even though that's I could tell that's what they were trying to do. Anyway, the point being, instead, for Jojo Rabbit, we want you to choose, if this is the film or the prompt that is your favorite and that you want to read during this week, we want you to choose for Jojo Rabbit a book with children as protagonists or with uh, the pr a protagonist who is a child or kind of that point of view narration because Jojo Rabbit really centers around a child and how they're experiencing these things in the world and has several other child actors who are in and out of it and it is certainly a key element of this film. So the fourth movie on the list is Joker, which if you haven't heard of it, it was a kind of origin story of the Batman villain Joker that came out this summer. The film ended up being pretty controversial for several reasons, and so we kind of are skirting over some of that controversy. I batted back and forth with Rebecca a couple potential prompts that would kind of lean into the controversy, and we just decided we didn't want to deal with that. So we're going with something that is just really simple a simple take on this movie which is that you should pick a book that has a, an anti-hero or a villain as the protagonist um, because this is an origin story of a really famous DC Comics villain the Joker we thought that if you're going to read a book that represents this film then you should read a book where the main character the protagonist is a villain or an anti-hero right after Joker is honestly my favorite movie on this list it is not a secret if you've been following me on Twitter the last month or so that I am obsessed with Greta Gerwig's version of Little Women. I love this story dearly. There's so many things we talked about around this. Obviously, it's like this very beloved tale. It has all these elements of it. The, the way that Greta chooses to tell the story is very interesting. What we ultimately circled on as being the most interesting prompt that we could choose is that we want you to pick a, a book that is both written by a woman and is about women. You can choose Little Women if you want to, but it's real long, so I don't know if you'll want to. But just any book that is both written by a woman and about women. All right, my video stopped while I was like waxing rhapsodic about Little Women, which I think it was trying to tell me to stop talking about Little Women and also to try to fix my lighting. So the lighting's still bad, but at least I'll stop talking about Little Women. Anyway, we've got four movies left and the next one on the list is also one I've seen and it's one you can go see right now if you have a Netflix subscription. It's just on Netflix and that is Marriage Story. For this one, we just chose a really obvious prompt based on Marriage Story, which is that you should read a book about a relationship. Marriage Story is obviously about a relationship, but actually it's kind of about the dissolution and changing of a relationship. It's about the dissolution of a marriage and how that relationship morphs and changes as that marriage is dissolved. It is actually kind of a really bittersweet story. So if you want imaginary bonus points from me, which do nothing and do nothing extra for this readathon, but our imaginary bonus points from me, um, you can choose a book that is a bittersweet one or a bittersweet take on a relationship, but you don't have to. You can just pick any book about a relationship. You can pick a romance novel with a happily ever after, and that's totally fine. The seventh movie on this list is also one that I've seen. I managed to catch it this weekend when it opened widely, and that is 1917. I watched it because I wanted to try to choose something that was maybe more interesting or more fitting than what we settled on. But honestly, after I saw this movie, this is a prompt that really just fits the movie. For 1917, we want you to choose a book that's set during a war particularly a book that emphasizes how crappy war is 
Um, but uh, 1917 is set during World War One. It's a pretty terrible war, and it's really about that kind of experience. The final two movies are not ones that I have seen, but Rebecca did catch up on this next one for us. It is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So to understand the prompt for this movie, what you have to understand is when this movie came out this summer, there was so much buzz around it, like so much buzz. It's the new Quentin Tarantino film. It has something to do with old Hollywood. It has a character who's playing Sharon Tate. No one really knew what the movie was about. We knew there were all these elements. We knew it was a Tarantino film, but like literally nobody knew what it was about. And so what we want you to do for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is to choose a really buzzy book, a book that everyone's talking about, or it seems like it's all around, or it has advertising everywhere. And yet you're not actually sure you know what it's actually about. What is Ninth House really about? What is The Starless Sea actually about? What are all of these buzzed books actually about? Pick one of those and read it if you want to support One's Time in Hollywood on your ballot. And the final movie on this list is one that I actually think I am going to see, even though it has like light horror elements and horror is normally not my jam. And that is Parasite, which is a Korean film uh, directed by Bong Joon-ho. And it's supposed to be really amazing. I've heard it is at the top of many people's best of lists of the year. For this, we would like you to choose either, you can, you get an option here, um, choose either a book that's translated. So it was not originally read written in the language that you are reading it in. I definitely need to read more translated works and I hope that through this prompt you will also be challenged to read more translated works. But optionally, if you don't want to read a translated work, you can also read a work that's set in Korea. This movie is taking place in Korea. It has subtitles if you go see it, you know, is translated into English and subtitles for viewers. But it also is a movie that is taking place in Korea. So you can choose a book that was originally written in the language that you're reading it in, if that book is set in Korea. Or you can read a book set anywhere as long as that book is translated. The, re the edition that you were reading is a translated edition it was not originally written in the language you were reading it. Those are all of the movies that are nominated for Best Picture this year. All of the movies on our little ballot. I'm going to put links down below to our Twitter and to kind of the ballot we've made up if you want to post about it on your Instagram stories. Mostly I would just love to see your TBRs for this, so please tag me or tag the at Oscars Readathon Twitter account on Twitter when you post your videos or post them down below or otherwise just make us aware of them. Anyway, I really hope you participate. I probably have left out details and so if I have I will insert footage from my editing self later talking about those but I really just need to go to bed right now so I can wake up and go to work tomorrow morning. Thank you so much so much for participating in our best picture inspired readathon. This will hopefully be the first of many years to come. Let me know down below which of these prompts you are most jazzed about, you think is most interesting, and let me know down below if you love Little Women as much as I do. Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.